Hello Saints, peace, love, grace, and Christ Jesus be with all of you. You know, recently I got a question from one of our brothers in Christ on my channel. And uh, he, asked, he asked me, he says, uh, can you make a video about walking in the Spirit versus living in the Spirit and what it means for each of us in the body of Christ? Well, Brother Henry, this video is for you, and I pray that it edifies the rest of our brothers and sisters as well. So what does walking in the Spirit mean and what does living in the Spirit mean and are they the same concept? So let us search out the scriptures and find out. In Galatians 5.16 Paul writes, This I say then, walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. In Galatians 5.25 Paul writes, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So the question is, what, what's Paul saying here? What does he mean by walking in the Spirit? And how do we do it? And uh, so the first thing, this term, walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit, are unique terms to the Apostle Paul. It's only found, in fact, in the book of Galatians. Now notice also that walking in the Spirit and living in the Spirit are not the same thing. Okay, they're not the same thing. And we know this by looking again at verse 25. Look at the wording. Paul says, let us also, okay, the word also walk in the Spirit. The word also here indicates that the two uh, phrases are similar but they're not synonymous. They're not the same thing. They sort of, in other words, they sort of need each other to get the, resire, uh, the desired result or meaning. Two separate ingredients uh, to a recipe, so to speak. So let's break it down one by one, starting with the term live in the spirit. In Romans, we see something interesting. In Romans 8, verses 10 through 13, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. In verse 11, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh for if ye live after the flesh ye shall die but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body ye shall live now the spirit of god is our only source of spiritual life before we were members in the body of christ okay before you were saved before we were all uh believers we were all spiritually dead we were born spiritually dead in sin. It's, the, it's only when we became believers in the body of Christ that we're given spiritual life, a new life, a new creation. We're made new. So when our Lord was crucified, He took our old nature, the old person, uh, and all of our sins, He took them into death, into the grave forever. Okay, all of them every single one of them all the past sins that we commit the present and the future in fact if you if you think about it when Christ was crucified he knew that you'd be here alive 2000 years later he he already knew what sins you'd commit he already knew everything and god knows everything from the beginning to the end okay so your sins were all future sins when he was nailed to the cross your sins were yet future and he paid for all your future sins 2000 years ago okay not just some of them not just the, the little ones and so on he, he took all your sins into the tomb of death with him in Romans chapter 6 verse 6 through 8 knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin 
for he that is dead is freed from sin now if we be dead with Christ we believe that we shall also live with him Galatians chapter 220 I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, this is what Paul's saying in Galatians 5.25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Paul's saying, we're assured by faith in our new life in Christ, our new life in the Spirit of God, living our lives in our new creation. Okay, Living in the Spirit, then, is simply recognizing that you've been given the Holy Spirit and you've become a new creation in Christ Jesus. The second half of what Paul says here, he says to walk in the Spirit. So what does he mean by walk in the Spirit? In Galatians 5.16 it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And again in Galatians 5.25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Now, as with everything else in God's Word, context is key, so we need to look at Galatians 5 verse 16 uh, to 25 to get the context of this this I say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would but if ye be led of the spirit ye are not under the law now, <clears throat> the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, <clears throat> excuse me, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, uh, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. And that sounds a lot like the world is today, doesn't it? Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now, in the last verse, 25, we can see that the phrase live in the Spirit is emphasizing the believer's position in Christ. But the term walk in the Spirit focuses on the believer's lifestyle. All right? Now, one of the most famous verses that Paul writes also explains this very well, and that's in Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 10 for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God not of works lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them now by grace are we saved sealed by the Holy Spirit becoming a new creation and thus living in the Spirit created unto good works here we see the next part to walk in the spirit once we're sealed with the holy spirit we're given the power to perform good works okay the fruit of the spirit thus walking in the spirit so boiling it down in simple terms living in the spirit happens when you're saved sealed with the the holy spirit of promise and walk in the Spirit happens after you're saved. It's the fruit of your salvation. It's the ability for the Holy Spirit to perform through you as a child in Christ Jesus. Now, we see the same situation here in the next verse, an example of living in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit in Titus 2, 14. 
who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Paul tells us what the fruit of the Spirit is in Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Now, understand, the Holy Spirit gives you the ability to walk in the Spirit. All right, But you have to do your part as well. And what do I mean by that? Doing your part means reading God's Word daily and praying always. And if you do these things, these two things, the Holy Spirit will guide you, will teach you, even pray on your behalf when you don't know what to pray. So I highly recommend you watch uh, another one of my videos in the channel. It's called The Critical Video. I'm a new Christian, so where do I begin? In that video, I go over everything you need in order to walk in the Spirit, especially if you feel like you've not been growing, or maybe you feel like you've been you've plateaued, or sometimes you might feel burnt out, or you don't understand what's going on. A lot of times, and this happens to all of us, my friends, all of us. And a lot of times, these things will happen when you, you don't have the right tools, or if you're doing things the wrong way. Uh, and in that video, I'm a new Christian, he goes over everything you need. And all the tools to place in your arsenal, your weapons of spiritual warfare, and I show you exactly what you need to be doing so you're continuously growing in Christ Jesus and if you're not using the right tools or doing things the right way according to God's Word you're most likely going to be stagnant as an infant you'll stay at the baby level in Christ spiritually and you're never gonna grow when you should be growing okay and that alone can cause frustration burnout and a feeling of plateauing and a lot of other you know depression so please take a look at that video uh, I'll put it in the description box for you and all you need to do is click on the on the link to watch it also a warning sign if you're lacking in the fruit of the Spirit Paul lists some of them for us in Galatians Galatians 522 he lists love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness and faith so if you're lacking of any uh, in these areas or having trouble in these areas then th that's a sign that something's wrong and you need to go back to the basics make sure you're using all the tools available to you and again I made a video all about that the tools you need to, to have a fighting chance in this spiritual warfare all the false teaching out there today trying to get its grip at you at every turn and, and the way the Holy Spirit acted all throughout the different dispensations were unique to those programs you'll notice that the Holy Spirit acted in a very different way before the conversion of Apostle Paul. You can see the shift that takes place in the book of Acts. The Holy Spirit performed signs and wonders when they didn't have a Bible to read. They needed they they didn't have the New Testament like we do to learn from. So the Holy Spirit revealed everything that they were taught back then uh, through miracles. And, and, and those things even in the early part of Paul's ministry prior to the completion of his 13 books the Holy Spirit revealed to Paul everything that he knew through revelation all the all the mysteries of the dispensation of grace were given to Paul by our Lord Jesus through revelation but when Paul had come to the end of his ministry the Holy Spirit pulls back and suddenly the Holy Spirit stops altogether it was the end of the revelation Paul's books were complete and we can see this pulling back by the Holy Spirit when Paul's ability to perform signs and wonders uh, specifically the ability to to miraculously heal people came to an end and he wasn't able to heal any longer so we when Paul's books were complete the Saints had God's Word to learn from the dispensation of grace when it ends at the rapture which could happen at any moment uh, revelation is made complete everything we need to know in God's Word today is given to us for our learning and edification there's no need for the Holy Spirit to reveal things to us at this point in time 
We have everything we need until the end of the dispensation of grace. All the signs, according to God's word, are complete. So we're to occupy till we're called up. All right. And when I say all the signs, according to God's word, are complete, I mean for the body of Christ. There are other signs and prophecies yet to be fulfilled. All right. And that's going to be fulfilled for the nation of Israel. Those signs and prophecies are specifically to the nation of Israel and not for the body of Christ. So once we're called up in the rapture, then the remaining prophecies that need to be fulfilled will begin in Daniel's 70th week. Now, if you noticed, God deals with the nation of Israel through prophecies and God deals with the body of Christ through the mysteries, not prophecies. Prophecies for Israel, mysteries are for the body of Christ. Now, in closing, to sum things up, living in the Spirit means to be a child of God, a member of the body of Christ, being sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise forever and ever and ever. Amen? Now, walking in the Spirit is simply letting the Holy Spirit empower you, enabling you to become active in the body of Christ, growing in Christ Jesus. So, I hope that answers things for you, Brother Henry. Um, I'm going to be doing another video in the future concerning the uh, Holy Spirit gifts that were active during Peter's ministry and early on in Paul's ministry and how that affects us or doesn't affect us today. So with that, peace, grace, and Christ Jesus be with all of you, and I'll see you on the next video.